So when I sat down and started writing this course, one of the things I thought would be imperative for you guys to know so, so that you can then use this in your discussion with potential second home buyer clients is the actual pros and cons of owning a second home. Now, by no means is this list going to be exhaustive. There's probably a whole bunch more pros and probably a lot more cons that can that you guys can think of. This is just to give you an idea of where we start. So one of the very first things is a tax benefit. Now you're gonna notice that the tax benefit actually could show up in a pro or a con. So <clears throat> owning a secondary home, just like your primary residence can provide you with some and I'm going to make sure to emphasize, and for you guys here, you can see, but for you guys listening later at home, I'm using finger quotes, some tax benefits that you may not be aware of. So for, exist, for example, if you're buying a, over a second home and it puts you over the million dollar in debt threshold, you may be able to write off some of the interest on the loan payment, potentially. If you own a second home and you use it to rent out part of the year that you're not there, then some of the portion of the maintenance could be also tax deductible because it's rental related. All right. Another pro obviously is the pro that most of you understand is the potential appreciation. Notice that this is truly really not an investment opportunity because most people's homes, even their primary homes, appreciate. But now you've got a primary residence that could be appreciating in value and a secondary residence appreciating in value. So you kind of have two legs to this stream of income. The Wall Street Journal has been quoted as saying that Closing costs, maintenance exp uh, expenses, and low rates of return shouldn't necessarily uh, be a reason that you buy investment property. Appreciation should be one of the largest reasons, all right? Another pro is the one that we kind of mentioned, and maybe I should have put that as the first, is the potential for rental income because it is a second home, which is typically in resort type of how, uh, towns, you know, Florida's and Arizona's and North Carolina coastal properties. Um, while you're not there, they actually can generate extra income. So that is a good thing and a pro because let's face it, you're not gonna be there all the time. Your client's not there all the time. It's a second home. So this opportunity of them not being there can create a third leg of income called rental income that they could generate. And that rental income could obviously try and offset some of the basic mortgage payments on that home, providing they have a mortgage. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, the re rental income could also uh, offset the depreciation and now what I'm talking about here is backwards. The house will get depreciation as a second home and the income that you earn against that depreciation will allow you to not capture that income as true taxable income. Once again, not a certified public accountant, just my observation. Now, there are some cons to owning a second property. And most of these cons actually go against the pro that we just mentioned. For instance, could be a challenge finding renters. You know, you're going to have to either find short-term renters. You don't certainly want to rent your second home out uh, on an annual basis because then that leaves no time for you to visit. Now, if you're doing that, I would probably classify that as an investment property and that's not what we're really talking about here, okay? So I'm talking about maybe the new Airbnb type of rental, maybe a 
monthly short term for people that want to be on the beach during the winter while or during the summer even i don't know i i get that backwards sometimes because i like being in florida in the summer most snowbirds come home in the summer um, to indiana and use that for the winter <clears throat> so this these are all cons that you could have to really put some thought into is you just can't go out and say, oh, we're going to rent the property. Well, you may have to put a plan in place. Obviously, there's always the issue of selling a second home, just like there would be of selling a primary home. So sometimes in some markets, it's difficult to sell. And if you have a second home and all of a sudden finances change and they want to divest themselves of this second home, that might be a problem. Or even if they do sell it, there could be a problem of the realization of capital gains. So that might actually block a sale as well. Understand what I'm saying now. There are people that can't sell a home because the tax implication of the sale is a pretty tremendous amount. I would love to be in that situation where, you know, I've got several hundred thousand dollars of taxes and if I sell my home, so it could potentially eat the profit as well. <clears throat> Obviously, the number one con is the affordability. Second homes can be a financial disaster, especially for people that are right on the edge or right on the border and they start shopping and they really can't afford a second home or are on the edge. So Realtor.com uh, recommends that you evaluate all of the aspects in a person's financial situation. Like, do they have, what's the interest rate going to be? Are they saving money for their children? Are there other things going into retirements or 401ks or pension plans? All of these things become important when determining a person's financial ability. Now, we're going to leave that right here and we're going to come back and start talking about how you guys as an agent can help them walk through their pros and cons. All right.